Okay, cool. I am ready to wing it when you are. All right, let's do it. Okay. Hey, Internet, this is the Drive to School podcast. Ashley Sheldon is back. Ashley, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Goodman? I'm all right. Ashley is a mental health professional and a really good friend of mine and uh, here to, to talk about uh, coping today, uh, which is good for a number of reasons, uh, partially because I'm bad at it um, and it gets worse when all the changes come. Ashley, you kind of threw this out because we got back to school coming right around the corner and everything else. Um, why else coping? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, coping is just like, I think we, we think of it um, as maybe just in emergency situations, right? I'm coping with this really difficult thing. I'm coping with this really traumatic situation, right? But that's really all that our brains and we're ever trying to do is cope, right? Um, there's even throughout the day, if it's not something that's like terrible and traumatic and awful, it's like there's inconveniences and stuff that we have to kind of like deal with. Um, and so we all just are coping, right? And a lot of the times if we don't realize the ways that we're coping, we end up falling into unhelpful coping skills and unhelpful coping mechanisms, right? That end up sometimes causing issues and hurt more than they help. That's probably a good sort of uh, way to talk about it, but th- th- there's helpful coping and unhelpful coping because coping is a reactionary thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so you're going to react. It's, it's just, are you reacting in a, in a way that's healthy or a way that's, that's not? Yeah. Yeah. And kind of the definition, one of the definitions of coping um, says expending conscious effort to solve personal and interpersonal problems and seeking to master, minimize, or tolerate distress, difficult emotions, and or conflict. So that's the uh, wordy definition, but it's it's just dealing with stuff, right? It's just dealing with stuff that comes up um, and trying to, to do better in your life. Right. And so when we, we talk about this, like everybody's going to have to cope because you can't avoid living in a sinful world where things are going to happen to you, where bad things are going to happen, where you're going to sin and put yourself in a mess, where other people are going to sin against you and put yourself in a mess. And so when we, we talk about unhealthy coping skills, we can take a bad situation and make it worse real quick, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because in the moment, we're just trying to feel better, right? In the moment when we're really, really struggling, when we're going through something really hard, when we're doing something that's really uncomfortable, our brain wants to take the path of least resistance, right? Right. Our brain isn't automatically going to say, what's the healthiest and most effective and most efficient way to deal with this problem? It says, how can I solve this problem as quick as possible and the easiest way possible that I don't have to expend as much energy, right? So that's, that's all we're ever trying to do. But that's a pickle though, right? Because that's when we go to coping skills is when we, when we need them. So we have to kind of talk about them ahead of time so that we can develop patterns of practice that, that are healthier. And this is actually something we do inside of the church every bit as much. Like we, we talk about, you know, your, your spiritual wellness, your, your um, going to church, you know, being uh, in invested in the word, learning the, the doctrines that, that aren't simply there because they're the most fun thing to do right now, but because they're healthy for when you need them. Um, we, we go to church so that when we are confronted with, with sin, death, and the devil, uh, we already have a place that feels like shelter and not scary. We, we uh, dive into God's word so that we can actually start to, to center our, ourselves as if the world is not revolving around us and this one particular issue right now, but that there's not only hope and forgiveness, but a whole counsel of God that, that speaks to the world being larger than just this, which is a good reminder sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of what you're talking about is an example of like what we call proactive coping skills, right? So these things that we do on a regular basis um, in a proactive way that increase resilience and the ability to manage stress, right? So there are things that we do on a regular basis, like going to church, like hanging out with our friends, like having good conversations with our families, um, doing physical activity, right? Listening to music, things like that, things that keep us kind of grounded, right? And in a good spot. Um, And so I kind of think of it as like, if you're running a marathon, right? You don't just show up one day and run a marathon, right? I mean, some people do, I guess, but it's not the best way to do it, right? Um, <laughs> and so they, they have to train, right. They have to put in the work, they have to get their bodies and their, and their minds ready, right. To like do that. Um, and so it's, it's similar to that in a way, right. Where we have to prepare and do things consistently and build up those skills, right. Because coping effectively and in a healthy way is a skill that we have to practice. 
Right. And, and you don't get to sort of choose when you're going to need it. Unfortunately, like that's the problem with coping is like, it's great to, you know, train for a marathon, but if you start getting chased by a bear, you just got to run. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's when the training matters because they're, they're also the, the bad habit ones that we sort of pick up on the fly. Cause they're the path of least resistance. Could you give me a couple of examples of sort of these, these unhealthy, bad coping skills that we use? Yeah. Yeah. So some maladaptive coping skills is the, the therapy word. Um, but I mean, the, the, really the biggest one and the most popular one that I see is using substances, right. Using alcohol, drugs, um, addictive behaviors, right. Um, because those are the things that work, they work in the moment, right. They make us feel better in the moment. Um, but they have long-term very negative consequences, right. Um, so that's a big one, um, unhealthy relationships with eating, either like eating, overeating, um, or not eating at all. Right. Kind of feeling a sense of control, um, talking, talking badly to ourselves, right. Having negative self-talk, like feeling like, oh, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I can't believe I got myself in this situation again. Right. Kind of like, um, just being hurtful to ourselves, um, just in general, um, really, I mean, that those are the biggest ones really. Um, and, and also something I've seen a lot is like over internet use, right? Right. Like just kind of doom scrolling, right. Just like being in social media, um, watching videos, watching TV, like just binging behaviors in general too. So when you catch yourself doing these, cause it's, it's not an if when you catch yourself doing these, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is self-awareness, right? Um, what I encourage people to do no matter what you're going through is to have a physical list of coping skills of healthy coping skills, um, that you can go to, right. Because if we're in the moment, um, and we're struggling and our brain just wants to feel better, we're not going to rack our brain to think, Hey, what's my list of healthy coping skills? Which one of these could I do in the moment? Which one of these do I have all the capabilities to do, right? Like, do I have headphones? Do I have somebody to talk to? Um, so one of the things I encourage is having like a physical list or like a list on your phone that you can easily go to. And again, expend the least amount of mental energy picking one, right? Um, some people have like a wheel that they spin and they're like, listen, this is my coping skill. This is the one I'm going to use in the moment. Um, so I think having a list that works for you, um, you can Google and find thousands, I'm sure of coping skills, um, and pick the ones that work for you. And a little bit of it is trial and error to say, Oh, this didn't work in this situation. Right. But, um, really figuring out which ones work for you and then having them in a place where you can easily get to them and use them in the moment. You know, it's crazy. That's exactly the same thing that uh, matters a lot when we try to do this spiritually too, when we, we, cope spiritually uh, everybody we, we know prayer is important but when you're too stressed to think praying and putting words to the things you can't think it's mm-hmm. us hard to do um and, and so here's where it's actually a good thing to have uh, a hymnal in your home um or honestly uh, the book of psalms it, get a free bible app and read those uh have hymns that that you have saved take pictures of them out of the hymnal and keep them on your phone uh so that you can sort of look through these things but to sort of have these things sort of marked and set aside and, and ready so that you don't need to sort of figure it out. And what's wonderful is they don't even need to directly apply it to the thing that you're worried about. Um, because sometimes it's actually a good thing to re- remember that there's more going on than just this. That's that's sort of the problem with with um, sin, with with pain, with, with uh, trauma is that it takes over your whole world. So like when you stub your toe, the only thing in the entire universe is, is your toe and the coffee table. Um, but to sort of be reminded, there's a lot of other good stuff out here. There's a helpful and a loving and a forgiving and a merciful God. And so when we have those things sort of queued up and ready, uh, we can pull out uh, the Psalms and just read a Psalm, just read a hymn. You don't even need to sing it, uh, but those are all prayers. So when you don't know what to say, cause you can't think you can sort of have the word addressed to you, which is what you need because religion is not sort of you directing your thoughts toward God and then him re- 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 reacting and responding, but rather him promising and delivering things long before you could ever ask and us constantly being reminded of these promises. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there are all kinds of ways to like, take a moment to do that. Right. Um, as, as like you said, as a proactive skill is something that we do on a regular basis as well as what we call kind of like first aid, right. Coping first aid in the moment where you really need those things. And like you said, the easier that we make it, just open it up, right. Look at what you need. Um, and a lot of the times like that will, again, it's a distraction, right. In terms of like how it works in our brain, right. Of course, we feel spiritually connected and, um, 
you know, feel better in the moment, but also like it is a distraction for our brain. And if we can remind ourselves, like you said, like there's other stuff going on, right? Like this isn't it. This isn't literally the end of the world right in this moment, even though it feels like it sometimes. Um, But if we can just kind of like get out of our brain for a second and say, okay, let me distract myself. Let me remind myself that there's other stuff going on. There's, there's good things in life, even though right now this feels really tough. Um, I know that I have things that help me and I know that I have things that work for me. Um, it's just about practicing doing them. Yeah. And people too. This is one of those things where, um, especially, um, we, we tend to, to sort of default to our nature a little bit with this. And so like, as an introvert, I will run from people when I'm coping. And mm-hmm. that's probably one of the worst things for me because I'm actually, I'm knit together in part of the body of Christ and I need people to help me along, but I will hide from them. And in the same way, uh, extroverts can ex- engage in some pretty reckless behavior as long as it puts them in a social scene when what yeah. they really need to do is actually address the problem and not hide from it. But um, we, we are actually giving each other uh, to support each other in various roles. We, we call them vocation, uh, but they're the way that we're actually given to, to support and help and care for and love each other. And those are things to lean into uh, for coping because you don't have to do this on your own. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're meant to be connected, right? We're meant to be part of a bigger um, part of ourselves. Right. And, and like you said, like a lot of people will tend to isolate or tend to, like you said, put themselves in, in dangerous situations just um, to be around others. Right. And I think the biggest thing is knowing yourself, what works for you? What do you tend to do? What's your default? And does that work for you? Sometimes our default works and it's helpful. And sometimes our default is a maladaptive coping skill, right? So we have to be really intentional um, in doing the thing that's not the easiest, right? That's life, not doing the easiest thing that's uh, the path of least resistance, but doing the thing that works for us and the right thing in our hearts. I like that. And that that sort of, it's not then just like, reject your nature because we're, we're old Adam. Um, we, we were born sinful. Like we, we strive against it, but it's, it's always going to be there, but then we can sort of say, well, what is, what is a good practice here? And so that might be even as an introvert journaling and, and, uh, reading a Psalm, and it might be talking to my counselor or my pastor or my parents or, 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 or my friends, uh, where they've been given to help, um, not to avoid talking to one of the other ones we go to the first, but, but again, is this a good behavior or, or, or not necessarily a good behavior, a maladaptive one? Yeah. Yeah. And get, get feedback, right. Get feedback from people that are important to you. Um, whether they're professionals, whether it's somebody in the church, your pastor, whether it's friends, your family, right. To say like, Hey, when I, when I use this coping skill, when I do this in the moment, does this seem like it helps me to you? Right. Because I'm, I'm biased, right. Like I see it every day, right. I do it every day. And so I don't really maybe have the best perspective. Right. But if somebody's like, Hey man, like you get really angry when you do this and that doesn't seem to be helpful and it makes you even more pissed, right? Then like, maybe let's look at another coping skill, right? But I think get, getting feedback from people is helpful because again, we're so in our heads that it's sometimes hard to see um, what's actually working, what's actually helping. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Anything else for coping? I think, like I said, the biggest thing is really just finding out what works for you. I think, um, maybe even like writing down, journaling, tracking, like, Hey, these are the behaviors that I need the most help coping with. Right. I really struggle when I feel sad. I really struggle when I'm angry. So kind of pinpoint like the things that you maybe have to cope with the most. Right. And then start from there um, and say, okay, this is what I really want to work on. And let me start my list. Let me start my way of healthy coping skills. I love it. Ashley Sheldon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Aster. Have a good one.